Council, it's my privilege to call this meeting to order. There are copies of our agenda on either side of the room, so if you'd like to pick one up and follow along with our proceedings tonight, I would welcome you to do so. There will be multiple opportunities for public comment, both with respect to items that are on our agenda tonight, as well as an opportunity for public comment with respect to items not appearing on our agenda. Those would be items of a general nature. It is our custom to begin our meetings by reciting the Pledge of Allegiance, so at this point in the evening, I would ask everyone to please stand and join us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to ask our fine village clerk to please call the roll. Commissioner Rankin? Here. Commissioner Barnett? Here. Commissioner Newstead? Here. Commissioner Durkin? Here. Commissioner Waldeck? Here. Commissioner Schnell? Here. Mayor Tully? Here. Thank you very much. That brings us to item three on our agenda, minutes of prior council meetings. We have one set of minutes from our regular meeting of December 4th, 2012 to review and approve tonight. Are there any changes, corrections, comments from any members of the council with respect to those minutes? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Those minutes are approved as presented. So as promised, we are now at that portion of the meeting where we entertain comments and questions of a general nature. <coughs> item four, if there are any questions or comments with respect to any items that are not appearing on our agenda tonight, I would invite you to please come down to the podium, share with us your name and address, and we would welcome hearing from you. And we actually have a special presentation tonight. Um, I will allow them to introduce themselves because I could not possibly do them justice. Welcome, good evening, and thank okay. you uh, for joining us from the Downers Grove Township Senior Citizens Advisory Committee. Thank you very much. Yeah, my name is Ralph Beardsley. Uh, I'm actually from Darien, uh, but I, I brought some Downers Grove people for protection. You know, we, we in case I get in trouble. <laughs> We're not, we're not as rough as Darian. Hannah, Hannah Benioff, who's the senior services coordinator with the township. Ken Yoshitani, who's actually the chairman of our body, the township senior services advisory committee. And a, a gentleman, I know you know Mark Thoman, who's with me as well. Mark is also on the senior services advisory committee and uh, also is the chairman of a group called SALT that I'll be getting into here uh, in, in the presentation. Um, Thanks for the opportunity to, you know, to appear before you this evening. We really appreciate it. Um, this is uh, actually, we've been doing these since about last June. And we've been, you know, sort of hitting every community uh, in the township, one by one by one. Uh, this is our final one on this roadshow. So we saved the best for last. All right. And, and I understand you'll be taking the uh, band to Europe after that and then South America? <laughs> uh, it's not yet announced. but. Uh, <laughs> But anyway, it's, it's good to be before you. Uh, a couple of basic things that I know you folks all know, but realizing too that we're on, we're on cable TV, just to hit. Uh, the, the township, of course, is all or part of nine communities. Uh, Downers Grove, Darien, Westmont, Willowbrook, Hinsdale, and Clarendon Hills in their entirety. And then portions, too, of Burr Ridge, Woodridge, and a little tiny piece of Lamont along with the unincorporated areas, of course, that comprise the township. Uh, the Senior Citizens Advisory Committee, which I've been on, it'll be two years next month that I got appointed to it, uh, was established a while ago, actually, back in 1983. And it's, uh, it's you know, nearly 30 years old. It's overseen by the township board, uh, including you know, the four elected members as trustees. And we have nine volunteer members on the body. Uh, they're appointed from, you know, kind of throughout the township, you know, there's some attempt to make it fairly representative of the whole township. And we focus on proposing programs to promote self-sufficiency and well-being of the older residents in the township. Um, Hannah here is quite fond of saying that we're meant to be the eyes and the ears of Downers Grove Township letting the township board know of what services and programs may be needed and what needs there are among our elderly residents and trying to get at addressing them. Uh, the township office, of course, is at 4340 Prince Street in uh, Downers Grove, right behind North High School. The general phone number there is 630-719-6610. 
And the number for senior services is 630-719-6682. And uh, these numbers are on, you know, one of the items there that, that we handed out for you. Uh, the website is www.dgtownship.com. And in terms of township services that we're involved with for senior citizens, a couple of different ways of looking at them. There's a few things that we're in directly in terms of helping to facilitate and make happen. And then a number of other things where we simply have referral relationships and try and, you know, send people onto them as they need these kinds of services. Um, first and foremost, in terms of the things we're directly involved with is the Dial-A-Ride program, which is, I think, pretty well known. Um, that provides curb-to-curb -to -curb transportation at $5 each way, both for people 65 and over, and for, as well as for disabled people. Um, that can be signed up for, you know, at the, at the township offices. And a few, few figures on this. In 2011, almost 4,000 trips were taken on the dollar ride program, involving over 600 people. Uh, so far this year, you know, we're getting toward the end of 2012, the numbers are running roughly the same. And if you look at, you know, a few patterns of use, uh, well, two-thirds of the people who used it were elderly, and the other third were disabled. Um, 80% of the use broke down amongst three things. Number one, 36% of people used it to go to work, to and from, which we think is kind of a, you know, a nice statistic to see that, you know, people, elderly people and disabled people are using it that way, over one third. 28% um, of people used it for medical appointments. And coming in third place with social activities was 17%. So if you just look at those three categories, that's about 80% of the use of that program. Um, RTA fare permits are another public transportation service that we, we make available. Um, the Dialyte program, by the way, is in conjunction with, in, in conjunction with PACE. Um, and the RTA fare permit program also serves people, 65 and up, as well as disabled persons. Um, and that is good for public transportation, you know, anywhere in the entire RTA system. Uh, and there, there's either, you know, a fee for what you're purchasing, or for some people, depending on their income, it's actually free. And that's also available again. You know, you can sign up for it at the township offices. Uh, it's a good program. I, you know, my wife and I have used it, for example, to go into the city on Metro. You get a nice discount right there. You go to a Cubs or a Sox game on the red line. Again, you get a nice discount there with that transportation. It's good throughout the entire system. Um, Vintage Times is a monthly cable TV program. <clears throat> that we have. Seen, Star it, many, seen yeah. it many times. Yes. Starring this, yeah, star, 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 star this starlet here, Hannah, <laughs> who does monthly, you know, 15 minute interviews with topics of interest for seniors. Uh, we change it up every month in terms of what we focus on. Um, that, I understand, it is on Monday and Friday here on, on your channel 6 at, um, I think it's 10.30 a.m. It's well viewed. We get a lot of good, you know, comments about it. Um, the Banner News Newsletter is another item that we do. Uh, are folks familiar with this somewhat, or if, no? Okay. I'll shoot some copies around. The newsletter is put out usually once a year and has a lot of topics of interest in it, you know, for seniors to read about. Uh, this past spring, you know, we hit about 5,000 senior households in the entire township. Uh, there's also a survey in there you'll find that I'll be touching upon in a little more detail here in just a, a few minutes as we move along. Uh, this is very popular, very much, you know, liked by, by people who had the chance to look at it this past spring and particularly to participate in that survey, uh, we got a very good response, which I'll be touching upon here very shortly. Our information and referral program is available at the township offices at that phone number, 630-719-6682. And this is basically a phone number that seniors can call kind of with any sort of question about where to find something in the community how to access things, how to try and get situations addressed. Um, 
A lot of times Hannah will answer that personally if she's around, or we make every effort, you know, to try and get back to people uh, with that within, say, 24 to 48 hours if they do leave a message of questions. Uh, again, very popular service and, and just meant really to help out folks with sorting through and, and finding various services and, and programs that they might need. Um, SALT stands for Seniors and Lawmen Together. And that's the thing that Mark is the chairman of and really driving well these days. Um, it's a consortium of the local police and fire departments. Ideally, a representation, you know, from each of our communities. We, of course, have very good representation from the fire and police departments here in Downers Grove. Um, and SALT had actually kind of closed off a couple of years back, a few years back. It was moribund for a little while. We've really now kicked it into gear. We're doing a lot of things and really have it moving again with good participation both from the municipalities and, you know, with Mark's leadership here. Uh, we're really making some, some strides with that. Uh, one of the things that the SAW program puts out is this. It's a little file life card. And this is something that's got a magnetic, magnetic back on it. Very simple thing for a senior to just simply put up on their fridge or someplace else in the kitchen. And in this, people can list who the doctors are, maybe what hospital they go to, uh, any kind of medical conditions that they have, medications that they're on, and so forth. And it, it's meant, obviously, to be an aid, particularly to first responders, but it's just a good item to have in case, you know, something starts to happen. Very handy thing. Again, this is put out by SALT. Um, it'll either cost people one dollar or maybe free, depending. And you can pick it up at the township office any time. Um, Something else that SALT has gotten into <clears throat> just recently, this is a list of township services here, okay? Um, it's updated quarterly by our faithful office staff, but it's 14 pages long, okay? It's an awful lot of detail. It's a great resource, but you can, go, you can also get lost in this. So one of the things we did this year, particularly for older people, and again, this is under the leadership of the SALT group, we now have a thing here called a pocket pal, which I'll pass around so everybody can have one. This is basically a compilation of all the key services for seniors, and it just comes in this nice little format here that's a much easier thing to go through, okay? And we've been handing these out literally by the hundreds since late summer, proving to be a very popular item, you know, amongst senior people because it's just a much easier reference source for folks to utilize. Um, thank you very much. So that's another thing that the SALT group, you know, has been up to um, of late. And they also helped do the survey that I'll be, be touching upon very, very shortly here. A um, few other items, the Coast to Coast Prescription Drug Discount Card Program is something that's available at the township office. Um, this has been going on for about a year. It's a nationwide program. Uh, there are no age income restrictions at all. This is for really anybody in the township. And what it does is it helps supplement coverage of prescription drugs. Uh, it's meant to pick up things that a drug, for example, that maybe is not covered by insurance, you can get a pretty deep discount utilizing this. Um, again, I'll pass this around if people haven't heard. Very simple thing to just simply register for, no cost, and it links people through something called DynRx, D-Y-N-E-R-X, to about 60,000 pharmacy, you know, and, and drug-related providers throughout the country. Uh, been going about a year. We received a, a little report today indicating people in the township have used this service to the tune of about $70 million. So it's picking up amongst a lot of people. And finally, <clears throat> just some other programs that, as I said, we link to certain things as well. And this is highlighted, you know, on your outline. We do a lot of referrals, too, of people in need of various things. Uh, 
couple of principal things. DuPage County Senior Citizen Services helps people out with homemaker and adult daycare programs and home delivered meals through the DuPage Senior Citizens Council. And the phone numbers are there for that as well. The uh, County Senior Citizen Services is 1-800-942-9412. And the DuPage Senior Citizens Council is 630-620-0804. And a lot of times we put people in touch with that. Um, again, a very good resource for, you know, a lot of things where, you know, seniors are in need of various programs and so forth. And sometimes just oh. simply don't know that they happen to be out there. Now, finally, the, the Community Needs Survey. Within this, you might have noticed here this questionnaire. It was 32 questions, which was really asking people, you know, to plow through a lot. Um, we got an outstanding response rate. Uh, over 500 people throughout the township took the time to complete that for us, get the results into us. We did a lot of outreach on this at senior centers and so forth around the township churches, that type of thing, and it really paid off. Um, and in this case, we were updating something we had done actually 15 years, uh, 14 years ago or so, back in 1999. And we used a similar format of questionnaires, just kind of tweaked it, working with the SALT Council, okay? Uh, and of those 500 plus responses, of course, the most were from here, Downers Grove itself, 170 people or so returned the survey to us. Um, and 95% of all those people, by the way, were 65 and up. So it really was, you know, very heavily, you know, really looking at elderly people and what they see as issues. A um, few highlights of the findings, um, just to run by you. Uh, still a lot of fears about safety amongst our elderly people. About 32% of people said they feared going out after dark. 31% of people said nighttime lighting in the neighborhood could be better. About 34% of people were uncomfortable with solicitors at their door. Um, and about 32% of people, again, you can see a third, a third, a third in all these numbers, uh, feared being victim of a crime. Uh, two most fears, you know, predictably burglaries and theft were the two things that, you know, elderly people seem to fear the most. Um, all those numbers were down a bit, at least from 1999. That's a good trend, because back then those numbers roughly ran at about a 40% level. So you can see there's been some decline, which is a positive thing, but still pretty prominent if you think, you know, nearly a third of all respondents say they were concerned with that. Uh, <clears throat> familiarity with services, you know, we find some gaps. Two thirds of people responding had no idea about the DuPage County Sheriff's Guardian Program which is a thing where if you've got an elderly relative living alone, you can call a number there and have them checked in on once or twice a week with a phone call just to be sure they're okay and so forth. Two thirds of people have no idea that that program even exists, which drove the sheriff's people crazy because they're doing a lot to try and publicize it, but it's just tough to get the word out. Um, about 46% of people didn't know about neighborhood watch programs. And 40, 41% of people too did not know that in a lot of our communities, you know, including, I assume, here, uh, police departments and fire departments will send out people, if you request it, you know, to come to your house and do like a fire prevention check or do a safety check, you know, on your residence, you know, usually free. Again, a lot of absence of knowledge that stuff like that in most of our communities in the township, you know, is out there and, and they're, they're ready and, and willing to come by and, and help people out. And a couple other just summary points. Nearly 60% of people never check their fire alarms, smoke alarms, I should say. 86% of people had no idea what a home preparedness kit was, which is something you have around for in case of a disaster or emergency, power outage, whatever, for two or three days can help a household keep going. Um, we're going to be working on that in the new year to try and get the word out about what is in a home preparedness kit. Uh, and finally, nearly half, 48% of all people had nothing in the house like this, a file life card. Nothing up there. And this is something, too, just to point out. This was just, this landed today in my mailbox. 
And so elderly people will be getting this too. It's an update newsletter. We usually only do one a year, but in this case we wanted to really publicize, you know, the survey results. So this came out along with a few other items too about, you know, stuff going on with the township. Again, this was just, you know, literally today from the mail that came out to people. Um, final thing that I'll share with you, uh, I'll just pass around. People had space to put survey comments in here in each town. So this is a compilation of about 46 comments that we got specifically from, you know, Downers Grove people. Uh, you will see, you know, kind of a typical thing when you send out something like this, you, you know, you, you get all sorts of comments on, all, you know, all sorts of ways. You'll see a lot of people just sort of, uh, you know, praise the fact that we were taking the time to do this and had a survey put out. Uh, but, you know, a couple of little funny comments here from Downers Grove people showing the range that you get. We had one here. Everyone in Downers Grove has been good to us. The village hall, police, paramedics, teachers. We are quite pleased with everything. Very nice. Then we had another one that said in part, do you have a person for cutting toenails? <laughs> <laughs> It has said Westmont does. Uh, anyway, maybe that's for a goal setting session or something. I don't know. <laughs> you got to have a little bit of levity. Uh, we'd be happy to take any questions. I see you still have the sense of humor. <laughs> yes. Don't want to ever lose that. And on that podiatry note, we'll bring this to a close. Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Beardsley. On behalf of the uh, Downs Grove Township Senior Citizen Advisory, Com advisory Committee, uh, thank you to you and uh, your colleagues for being here tonight as part of your world tour and uh, sharing uh, this important information uh, more broadly with our residents who yeah. may be very interested in knowing what kind of services you either provide or you're linked to, because you're right, there's an awful lot out there that's already available and it's probably just a lack of knowledge that keeps yes. it from being utilized more extensively yeah. than it already is, which is important because as the uh, existing governmental bodies try to figure out how to, to meet their needs of their of the residents, understanding what's already available and perhaps being underutilized yes. is more important now than ever before with the increasing economic pressures and whatnot. And the more that we can do to, no one's going to say it for me, more we can do to communicate, <laughs> cooperate, yeah. and collaborate yeah. with other bodies that are already out there, uh, the more better we'll all be in terms of uh, serving our, our shared constituents. Uh, yeah. Any questions from the council for Mr. Beardsley or any of his colleagues? Commissioner Walbeck. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Thank you, Ralph, for coming out tonight and, and, and the crew. Uh, we, uh, there was an a, uh, annual luncheon yesterday that I was uh, happy to attend. <coughs> and uh, yourself and Mr. Toman were, were recognized for the work that you do uh, uh, for the seniors. And uh, Ralph actually only brought in about half, half the stuff uh, that they do, the senior portion, because there was a whole section on, uh, on the, of services uh, for our youth as well. Uh, mm -hmm. peer juries and things like that and you know it just shows that there's a great human need uh, uh, throughout our communities uh, served by the townships uh, uh, not just Downers Grove Township but uh, other ones that serve Downers Grove uh, Lyle and uh, in York so uh, we appreciate the work you do thank you and uh, uh, well these these are not considered uh, well, there was a referendum some time ago that suggested that maybe townships could be eliminated. And uh, obviously, uh, with all the work, uh, there's, there's so much work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And uh, some communities might take a pass on providing those human, human service needs. So uh, thank you so much and, uh, for your time and, and your effort. And congratulations to the both of you on your uh, recognition yesterday. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner. Anybody else? Any other questions or comments? Well, terrific. Thank you again, Mr. Beardsley, and Thanks. particularly for putting all the Downers Grove-centric comments from the survey Absolutely. into uh, a couple pages for us, because regardless of the source, we're always very interested in what our uh, constituents have to say. So thank you right. very much, and thanks for being here tonight. Yeah. Happy holidays to one and all. Likewise. Thank you. With that, we're still on public comments of a general nature. Are there any other questions or comments from members of the audience with respect to matters of a general nature regarding items not on our agenda tonight? Very well. Hearing none.
Then we'll move on to item five on our agenda, public hearings. Once again, we have a public hearing tonight. It's that time of the year. We have a uh, public hearing tonight with respect to proposed special <coughs> service area number five. This public hearing will please come to order. This public hearing has been called by the Village Council to consider the formation of special service area number five and the levy of taxes affecting said area. The approximate street location for the special service area is Atwood Court, which is located on the west side of Fairview Avenue between 66th Street and 67th Court. An accurate map of said territory is on file in the office of the village clerk and is available for public inspection, although you might want to wait to ask her until she's done with this meeting. Notice of this hearing was published in the Downers Grove Reporter and a certificate of publication is made part of these proceedings. I would, I would now like to summarize the procedures which we will follow for tonight's public hearing. First, Dave Fieldman, village manager, will provide an overview of the proposed special service area. Next, there will be an opportunity for members of the village council to ask questions or make comments. Next, there will be an opportunity for members of the public to make statements or comments or to submit written statements or comments for the record. Thereafter, I will ask again if any member of the council wishes to make a statement or ask a question. And finally, when all that has concluded, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. At this public hearing, witnesses will not be sworn and a verbatim written transcript of the statements or testimony given at the hearing will not be prepared. However, a recording of the procedures will be made on village equipment and retained until minutes of the hearing have been prepared and approved by the village council. So now that we all know exactly what to expect, we'll start at the top with a overview from our village manager with respect to the proposed special service area number five. Mr. Fieldman. I will be brief. This was presented on November 13th, and if it seems like we keep having the same type of hearing and discussion, it's because we've done this now several times. Uh, this time it's an SSA to pay for the maintenance of the stormwater detention basin at this subdivision in the event that the Homeowners Association fails to do so. So this is very similar to the Green Acres process we just went through. A reminder, we would only levy in the event that the association fails to properly maintain and it only affects the properties within this subdivision. We're happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions or comments from members of the Village Council? We've all, Commissioner Schnell? Just, just a comment. I, this is a great way to make sure that everything is maintained properly. If it isn't, at least as a way to, for the subdivision to pay for the maintenance. So it's, it's a good step in the right direction. Indeed, we've learned from the past and yes, this is being have. very proactive. Any other questions or comments from the council? Hearing none, now I will open up for any questions or comments on this item from members of the public. Any questions or comments with respect to the, with, with respect to the proposed special service area number five? Good evening. Good evening, uh, Mayor Tully, commissioners, staff. Um, I think this procedure of uh, instituting the special service areas associated with uh, new subdivisions with uh, stormwater management um, projects that might uh, need attention is a very good uh, complement to the stormwater utility so that uh, we're not using the stormwater utility to pay for these um, individual subdivisions um, continued uh, compliance with their original uh, stormwater plans. And so I'm hoping that maybe um, there might be opportunities to uh, retrofit and uh, apply this to previously approved subdivisions if there's any modification <coughs> or need for uh, renewal or uh, repair of stormwater facilities within those subdivisions. So uh, I'm very pleased that the council is making this a regular component in uh, planning for the future uh, maintenance of individual subdivision stormwater pro uh, projects. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Goodman. Any other questions or comments from members of the audience with respect to this item? Hearing none, I will now ask if any of the members of the Village Council have second thoughts and have questions or comments. Since there are none, I will then declare, actually, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn this public hearing before I get in trouble from my village attorney. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
All right. Now, the public hearing on the proposed special <coughs> service area number five is adjourned. And that brings us to item six on our agenda this evening, which is our consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments on any of the consent agenda items from any members of the audience? <coughs> you sat down too quickly, Dr. Goodman. Welcome back. Thank you. You can never tell how long the discussion is going to go on a particular <laughs> item. So uh, You've been coming I have some experiences the with the council the in other occasions. So I would like to comment on one of the consent agenda items that uh, is also receiving its first reading tonight, and that's the uh, extension of the Emerald Ashbore treatment contract. Um, that was not uh, something that was on the agenda that was presented last week, but it's a very important uh, component in uh, something that uh, was on the agenda, namely uh, the renewal of the contract with the Suburban Tree Consortium. In the reply that I'm sure was shared with the council, uh, the staff pointed out that this emerald ash borer treatment seems to have been quite effective and to have reduced the number of trees that needed to be replaced over 2012. And um, so I'm very pleased that this is a project that the village is continuing. My question is, um, has it been sufficiently um, successful in the village that you want to uh, perhaps publicize this and encourage private parties who have uh, many of our village's ash trees on their property to also uh, look into treating them. I know we have arranged to have uh, the ash trees on our property treated and they seem to be maintaining their health. I'm hoping that more private parties will do that and maybe we won't have the disaster, certainly not as rapidly as we originally expected when uh, we realized that the ash borer, the emerald ash borer was uh, coming to Downers Grove. So uh, can you and the staff consider what ways would be appropriate to help residents understand the success of this treatment program <coughs> for the village? Sure, Dr. Goodman, we can certainly look at uh, how we might advertise or make that information available to those who might make use of it on their, their own private property. Appreciate the suggestion, thank you. <coughs> Other questions or comments from any members of the audience with respect to any of the items on the consent agenda? Any questions or comments from any members of the Village Council? Commissioner Durkin. Yeah, I just want to point out uh, and thank staff for looking into resolution 00-05072, letter I on the uh, consent. Uh, that's the authorization license agreement for the uh, Rotary Club of Downers Grove. Um, and I'm glad to see that we were able to reduce that uh, letter of credit request of 120% down to an actual uh, letter of credit at 100%. So. Thank you for all that made that possible. I know that that uh, may not seem like a lot on a thirty, forty thousand uh, dollar item, but you know, for nonprofit, that's big numbers. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Other questions or comments from members of the council? Hearing none. Roll call, please. Commissioner Schnell. Aye. Commissioner Durkin. Aye. Commissioner Rankin. Aye. Commissioner Barnett. Aye. Commissioner Newstead. Aye. Commissioner Waldeck. Aye. Mayor Tully. Aye. The consent agenda passes unanimously. That brings us to item seven on our agenda tonight, which is our active agenda, and we have several items on our active agenda. First, do I have a motion to adopt an ordinance to amend parking permit fees? Mayor Tully, I move to amend the parking permit fees as presented with the following changes. Belmont and Maine rates to increase $10 per resident, $20 for non-resident. Fairview to increase $15 per resident and $25 for non-resident. Second. Any questions or comments from any members of the Village Council? I'm sorry. I got that out of order. Let's start with the public. Any questions or comments from any members of the public with respect to this item as corrected? 
All right, now, questions or comments from the Village Council? We'll start with the move on. Dave's got it. Could I just ask a clarifying question of Commissioner Barnett? Is that uh, intended to be the al alternative proposal as presented in the green sheet? It is not. It is not. It is Could not. you clarify that for us one more time, please? Belmont and Maine, resident increases of 10, non-resident of 20, Fairview increases, resident increases of 15, and non-resident of 25. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Sure. Commissioner uh, Barnett. I mentioned that I had an alternate proposal, and as you've just heard from the exchange with, with the manager, the uh, proposal, the movement tonight is slightly different than that. We, uh, as a council, we went through a pro budgeting process, and, uh, and we budgeted, in fact, based on these increased rates in the upcoming year, actually a couple of years. Um, the proposal that was uh, before us last week, in, in my opinion, I put too much of that burden on our residents as opposed to non-residents. Um, given what we know about the other rates in our, sort of in our area, if you will, in our market area, and our attempts over the last few years to try and uh, manage our, our revenue as best as possible by keeping the burden on residents down as much as possible. So the proposal tonight, those numbers I read, um, put us slightly below the uh, typical market rates as well as retaining the same number approximately the same number of new dollars as opposed to the proposal last week, which was quite a bit higher. Um, so this is a little lower burden on our residents, a little higher burden on non-residents, retaining the same approximate budgeted amount of money for 2013. And, and just to clarify, staff heard that motion as a motion to adopt the ordinance with all the other provisions as provided for in the agenda materials. That's that correct? correct. Thank you. And that's how I understood the motion. Thank you. It was the motion that was presented with the those modifications articulated by Commissioner Barnett. Thank you. Everything else stays the same. Thank you for explaining that, Commissioner Barnett. Other questions or comments from the council, Commissioner Chanel? One, I, I have, I feel more comfortable with those numbers than I did with the numbers that were here. So I congratulate Commissioner Barnett and kind of lowering things a little bit. Um, question for staff: These proposals now have to go back to Metra for approval. And then they could not be instituted until third quarter? Or is there enough time to get them <coughs> by Metra to be instituted in second quarter? We expect Metra and the BNSF to take all 60 days that's allowed for in the agreement. So we expect and we'll be planning for the increase to be effective in the third quarter okay. of next year. And then you will notify people who presently have parking places of the proposals because you, you have you already um, informed them about the proposed ones that, no? No, we have not. We okay. will send notices and renewals on Thursday of this week. And with this motion, if this motion passes, we will hold off on the fee increases okay. until we know for sure from Metro and BNSF. If there are any issues and for whatever reason they don't uh, approve what's on the table, we will come back to council Please for further report. direction. Okay. They have previously approved what staff have presented, correct? Yes. So the numbers, the revenues that we would get are basically the same. It's just they've been tweaked in certain ways. Small changes, yes. Right. Okay. Thank you. Just clarification for people out Thank there. You. Thank you, Commissioner. Other questions or comments? Commissioner Wallach? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah, I'm glad we, uh, we changed these rates a bit. Uh, so if, if Metra denies the rates, I would just for clarification, if they deny these rates, we're still going to go ahead with the uh, with the modifications in the code that uh, that's all part of the motion. That's correct. Okay. Uh, yeah, I do agree that that non-residents should pay more because uh, uh, there are services, police services, and the like that uh, uh, that are included and uh, you know that need to be covered. Uh, but as I said in the past, and, and this is probably being my last chance to comment on parking rates, uh, at least up here. Uh, the average worker, uh, person who works in parks, uh, will park about 240 days a year. They work about 240 days a year because you take time off for vacations and holidays and, and weekends and so forth. So based on that and, and, and the cost of $100 per quarter, uh, which, we, which we're changing, uh, that cost comes to $1.67 per day. 
and and I've always I've always had a problem with the with the inexpensive fares because it it, it does bounce back to the general public. Uh, you know, dollar sixty seven a day is pretty cheap, and if people would would drive and park uh, in, in the city, they they would not be able to get those those kinds of rates anywhere near that. Uh, and this this has a this has an effect with Metra controlling the rates. Uh, it it costs more to take the bus, for example. Mm -hmm. It uh, uh, the likelihood of having additional public transportation is less when people are encouraged to drive and at a buck sixty-seven a day, there's almost an incentive to drive. So it, it, it really does work against uh, against public transportation as a whole. Um, the, and how does it affect, it also affects people who don't take public transportation, who are, are not commuters, uh, because we do have to provide these services. And also, uh, at the cheaper rates, uh, Metra isn't, isn't making, uh, making additional uh, funding. And so their shortfalls have to be made up through, uh, uh, through the sales tax that everybody pays. You know, there's an RTA sales tax. And so, as a, as a regular resident, when you put on the TV and you see, uh, you know, uh, transportation wars, you know, the RTA, Metra, PACE, raising fares, uh, these things all affect you whether or not uh, you actually use the public transportation. Uh, like I say, there's an RTA tax out there. So, uh, you know, I'm glad to see that we're we're raising the rates, uh, but keep in mind that uh, they they're uh, what's it, artificially low is what it amounts to, and and that's due to Metra not really not really cooperating with the RTA and Pace partners. Uh, it actually works to their detriment. But anyway, I'm glad that we're changing it as best we can, and I hope Metra sees the wisdom of raising <coughs> rates even to what we're asking. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Other questions or comments from members of the Village Council? Commissioner Barnett? I just wanted to add one more thing for the public that's out watching this on TV. Um, for some perspective here, Commissioner Waldex pointed out Metra and, and the RTA, and that is a real challenge. He's, he's exactly right. And uh, we struggle with that in many ways. Um, but these rates are rates that have been essentially unchanged since 2001, I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it, it's never fun, certainly, to pay more for anything. Um, but we are compelled to do a variety of maintenance issues re relative to these parking lots, as well as, as Commissioner Waldeck said, be the environment in which the emergency services are provided and ready. And uh, so a, a, an increase like this is, there's never such a thing as a good time, but I'd suggest after a better part of 12 years, it's probably due. Thank you, Commissioner. Well, I'm glad that we put this off at Commissioner Barnett's suggestion last week for some further thinking and uh, analysis amongst ourselves and then uh, the opportunity to consider an alternative proposal because I, I agreed that while an increase was appropriate since, as you pointed out, there hasn't been an increase in over 10 years, that uh, we shouldn't increase the amount on residents any more than we were increasing the amount on non-residents. So this proposal, as was articulated in the motion by Commissioner Barnett, uh, basically keeps in place the same $30 delta that was instituted 10 years ago. So both amounts rise and maintain that existing delta, which I think is uh, a good thing and also is consistent with not only past practice, but is, is more favorable in comparison with some of the neighboring communities in terms of what deltas they experience in terms of the difference between residents and non-residents. I also think and I appreciate the adjustment to the Barnett proposal, for lack of a better phrase, in that I believe it's very consistent with what we put out there as part of the proposed and now adopted fiscal 2013 budget in terms of additional revenue from parking increases. So I think in terms of process, uh, this is a, uh, on balance, a better way to go about it. So I appreciate that. And, and then finally, as Commissioner Barnett uh, indicated, these modified numbers uh, are also, don't put us at the highest range of, of neighboring communities, but put us more consistent with uh, 
making us you know, making us more competitive with other communities, and yet not and yet taking advantage of the fact of the very high demand and the, the, the fact that there are, as was discussed by Commissioner Waldeck and others, uh, very real expenses that have to be uh, recouped in order to continue to provide uh, that opportunity to continue to commute in the way that many of us do. Uh, so I appreciate the week, I appreciate the additional analysis, and I appreciate the, uh, the modification. So if there's nothing further, roll call please. Commissioner Barnett? Aye. Commissioner Durkin? Aye. Commissioner Rankin? Aye. Commissioner Neustadt? Aye. Commissioner Waldeck? Aye. Commissioner Schnell? Aye. Mayor Kelly? Aye. Matter passes unanimously. Brings us to item 7B as in boy. Do I have a motion to adopt a resolution expressing intent to continue participation in the Suburban Tree Consortium and authorize certain purchases for fiscal year 2013? Second. Second. Questions or comments from members of the audience on this item? With the trifecta, Dr. Goodman, hello again. Good evening again, uh, Mayor Tully and Commissioner's staff. I commented on this item uh, last week, and the staff has provided some helpful information in answer to some of the questions I've raised. Um, in particular, well, it's printed in the green sheets that are now white uh, that were available to people at the meeting and also online. Um, the particular answer seems to be that um, the emerald ash borer has not had as devastating effect during the year uh, 12, uh, 2012 as the staff originally thought. And uh, part of that is the chemical treatment um, and uh, trying to preserve the health of the trees that the village has actively engaged in. And I'm very glad to see that. Um, the other thing is that uh, there may be some other causes that the staff memo, memo refers to that have uh, led to a smaller loss of trees this year than was anticipated. <coughs> that, that's very helpful information. Uh, I was looking for a little more numerical information, both for this year and for past years, of the number of trees that have actually been uh, lost, removed from the parkways, and the number of uh, new trees that have been requested and uh, planted for residents. Uh, well, I guess those might be two numbers that were different, the requested number and the number that were actually planted in uh, response to those requests. Um, I think this year, uh, as I remember it, the staff said that they were able to satisfy all the requests for new trees. But still, it would be very interesting. I thought it might be possible for the staff to provide us those breakdown numbers of uh, separately the damaged uh, trees uh, that had been removed and replaced and in addition, the new trees that had been requested and planted. Um, so I am hopeful that the staff can provide that. Uh, I didn't find that sort of breakdown in the landscape manual. Maybe I just didn't look in the right place, but uh, I think that kind of information is very useful to the public and uh, perhaps to the council too. Uh, so that, that's my remaining question. Uh, but in general, I'm very pleased that the staff explained why uh, the anticipated number of trees replaced was not uh, the number that you needed to replace during 2012. Thank you. Right. Thank you. And, and obviously, I think that uh, we have a very long-term and comprehensive view of maintaining and enhancing our tree inventory throughout the, the, the community. And it's one that I think spans multiple years, so it may be a little difficult to slice it up into a yearly basis, but uh, that may be something that offline uh, can be pointed out. But um, I, I know that you know, it may be one year is here and another year is there, and there are many factors. And it's tough to look at it from a snapshot perspective, but I think if one looks at it from a more long-term perspective, I think we're doing a good job of maintaining or enhancing our, our tree inventory. Um, but you know, what that long term would be, whether it's 5, 10, 15, 20 years, uh, I'm not sure, but maybe that's something that we can address offline at some other point in time. 
because it, it might be it might be interesting information to have. But thank you. Any other questions or comments from members of the public on this item? Questions or comments from members of the village council? Roll call, please. Commissioner Schnell? Aye. Commissioner Durkin? Aye. Commissioner Rankin? Aye. Commissioner Barnett? Aye. Commissioner Neustadt? Aye. Commissioner Waldeck? Aye. Mayor Tully? Aye. That matter passes unanimously. That brings us to item 7C as in Charlie. We have a motion to adopt an ordinance which would establish the 2012 aggregate tax levy as presented. Um, so moved. Second. Any questions or comments from members of the public? Questions or comments from members of the village council? Roll call, please. Commissioner Schnell? Aye. Commissioner Durkin? Aye. Commissioner Rankin? Aye. Commissioner Barnett? Aye. Commissioner Neustadt? Aye. Commissioner Waldeck? Aye. Mayor Tully? Aye. That matter passed unanimously. It brings us to 7 D as in David. We have a motion to adopt an ordinance levying taxes for the fiscal year that basically spans 2012 for the village of Downers Grove Special Service Area Number Two, the Downers Grove Downtown Service Area. So moved. Second. Questions or comments made members of the public? Questions or comments from members of the village council? Roll call, please. Commissioner Barnett? Aye. Commissioner Neustadt? Aye. Commissioner Rankin? Aye. Commissioner Durkin? Aye. Commissioner Waldeck? Aye. Commissioner Schnell? Aye. Mayor Tully? Aye. That matter passes unanimously. Brings us to 7E as in Edward. Do I have a motion adopting a very similar ordinance except for special service area number four, the Green Acre subdivision? Mayor Tully, a motion to adopt an ordinance for the levying of taxes for the fiscal year commencing on the first day of January 2012 and ending on the 31st day of January 2012 for the Village of Downers Grove Special Service Area Number 4 Green Acres Subdivision is presented. Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments from members of the audience? <coughs> questions or comments from the Village January Council? Twice. Do we all recognize that the uh, time period covered by Commissioner Durkin's motion is the calendar year 2012. Okay. No, Did I misread this? Sure. You want me to reread re -read no. it? No. Does everyone understand that that's Close the time period it's covered? Mm -hmm. I think everyone understands. Yeah. No, I, Thank I you just for was concerned. What did I do? You said January. You're, January. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. It's not a big deal. All right. Any other questions from members of the village council? Roll call, please. Commissioner Durkin? Aye. Commissioner Barnett? Aye. Commissioner Rankin? Aye. Commissioner Neustadt? Aye. Commissioner Waldeck? Aye. Commissioner Schnell? Aye. Mayor Tully? Aye. That matter passes unanimously. All right, so we spare our, my colleagues' breath and we don't have to worry about yours anymore. I'm going to suggest that we take the remaining ordinances, the remaining items, the abatement ordinances, which are on our agenda because they're all similar. 7F as in Frank through M as in Mary. Take them together in one motion. Mayor. So they don't all have to be read separately. Let me read it. Sure. So I guess I'm asking for a motion to adopt ordinances 00 05054 through 00 05461, which are also known as active agenda items F, as in Frank, through M, as in Mary. Mayor Tully, a motion adopting ordinance abating a portion of the 2012 tax levy related to the general obligation bonds. Series 2005, Series 2007, Series 2008A, Series 2008B, Series 2009, Series 2010, Series 2010B, and Series 2012 as presented. Second. Any questions or comments on any of those from members of the audience? Any questions or comments from members of the village council? And again, for those of you following at home, abatement means those are taxes that we levied just a moment ago that we're not going to collect, not going to collect. Roll call, please. Commissioner Durkin? Aye. Commissioner Barnett? Aye. Commissioner Rankin? Aye. Commissioner Neustadt? Aye. Commissioner Waldeck? Aye. Commissioner Schnell? Aye. Mayor Tully? Aye. That matter passes unanimously. Thank you very much. It brings us to the end of our active agenda and takes us to uh, item eight on our agenda tonight, which is our first reading or our workshop portion of our meeting where we entertain matters that will be presented for discussion and consideration, but not voted on until a future date. As is customary, we'll turn this portion of the meeting over to Village Manager David Fieldman. Mr. Fieldman. Thank you, Mayor Tully. Uh, there are three items on tonight's first reading agenda. The first is consideration of an ordinance refunding certain library bonds. And here to present this information on this item is our finance director, Judy Button. 
Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and Council. A refunding opportunity has been identified for the Series 2003 library bonds that could save the library about $100,000 or about 4% net present value. This Series 2003 bonds that are callable after January 1st was an advanced refunding of the 1996 bond issuance that financed the library expansion and renovation project. <clears throat> the village's financial advisor, Northern Trust, has recommended a direct placement to a bank or financial institution instead of the typical public, public offering, since it would reduce the cost of issuance. The amount of their funding is approximately two and a half million and the term is about five years. This is just the right structure for a direct placement. Uh, banks and financial institutions like smaller amounts with shorter terms. <clears throat> there are no underwriter fees or rating, rating agency fees for a direct replacement which reduces the cost of the refunding and hence increases the savings to the library. In order to, remove, to move forward with this opportunity, staff is requesting approval of a parameters ordinance and the basic terms of that are a minimum net present value savings of 3%, maximum size of refunding of 3 million, <clears throat> the ordinance expires December 31st, 2013, and the mayor is authorized to execute the refunding agreement. The key steps are first, village council approval of the parameters ordinance, next, the bond issue has to be priced. Uh, this is going to be done through a competitive RFP process by Northern Trust to find the bank or financial institution that offers the best pricing. Then execution of the bond purchase agreement which must conform to the parameters ordinance and finally closing on the bond purchase agreement. As you know, the library is a component unit of the village for which the village is financially accountable and the bonds are supported by the tax levy. The bonds are backed by the full faith and credit of the village. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Thank you very much for the presentation. And uh, of course, we have, for those of you who are watching at home and don't know, we also are visited tonight by our uh, library director, Mr. Rick Ashton, who's here tonight. Just in case there's any questions about what the library thinks about this. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Ashton. Mr. Mayor, uh, council members. Uh, I'm glad to speak in support of this initiative uh, by village staff. Uh, the library board and library staff generally are happy to uh, reduce the uh, levy for the people of Downers Grove for the next uh, five years uh, to complete the retirement uh, of the bond issue uh, that uh, uh, supported the construction of the library building uh, that is uh, now in place. Uh, the building uh, that was constructed uh, with the uh, proceeds of this bond issue uh, is now uh, a bit over 13 years old and uh, uh, has been uh, very uh, actively and uh, effectively uh, used by the people of the community uh, for that time. Uh, and uh, is being uh, used in different ways than it was originally planned. Uh, and so uh, in the next uh, two years, uh, you will see uh, some changes to that building uh, that will be done uh, thanks to the stewardship of uh, the library board uh, in uh, past years. Uh, that those uh, changes to the building uh, will be made uh, from existing funds uh, without any additional financing. The request for proposal uh, for architectural services went out yesterday. Uh, we hope to uh, be in uh, design uh, by April of 2013 in construction by October and uh, inviting you all to a rededication event uh, in the spring of 2014. We think the project will be uh, between one and a half and two million dollars, all from existing funds. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Mr. Ashton. Thank, lots of exciting news at the library. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you for being here, good to see you. On the bond issue, any questions, as long as Mr. Ashton is here from the Village Council of Mr. Ashton, our library director. Are there any questions from any members of the audience with respect to this item? Any questions of Ms. Butney? 
Any questions of Commissioner Durkin? <laughs> I, any questions of the Village Council? How about just a comment? Sure. Commissioner Waldeck. Uh, for people who are not into bonds and stuff like that, for the, uh, for the people who hold the old bonds, this is really bad news for them because uh, they won't be able to get the, the current rate, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the higher rate, uh, and they'll be able, hopefully they'll be able to invest and uh, put, in, put in for the lower rate. But the good news is taxpayers. This is all for the taxpayers. And, and it also helps not just the library, but it's, it's the entire village, since the entire village is on the hook for this. So good news for our taxpayers and good news for the library. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Other questions or comments from members of the council? I'll just add to that that I appreciate, as we all do, mm -hmm. that staff, whether it's the library, our own village staff here at 801, is always looking out for opportunities to refinance bonds and save everybody some money. So thank you for continuing to do that. Appreciate your vigilance and thank you for working with uh, the library staff as well as you have to to bring this opportunity to uh, the residents of Downers Grove. Thank you. Good to see you, Mr. Ashton. Uh, the second item on tonight's first reading agenda is consideration of an ordinance establishing turn restrictions at the Avery Coonley School. And our Public Works Director, Nan Newland, has additional information on this item. Good evening. It would not be a Village Council meeting without a visit from Public Works. Good Thank evening. you. Good evening. As Dave said, this ordinance is prepared to amend sections of the Village Code concerning morning and afternoon turn restrictions on Maple Avenue at the Avery Coonley School entrance. Um, the driveway on Maple Avenue serves the school and would be restricted to right in and right out uh, movements only between the hours of 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. on school days. Um, this request came from the school itself um, in an effort to improve safety at this location. The uh, design of this driveway is less than ideal due to the close proximity to 55th Street, the curve on Maple Avenue, the geometry of the driveway itself, and the uh, conflict with various turn movements here. The school had attempted over a period of time to improve this on their own without instituting changes on Maple Avenue by policing it with their own parents and sending out communications to them asking that they not turn left into the site or left out of the site. Um, that was only a marginal improvement over the situation. And so they approached the village and asked us to put in formal turn restrictions on Maple Avenue that could be enforced. The, uh, as I said, it would be implemented during the hours of 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. on school days only. And this item was presented at the TAP meeting on November 14th and received a unanimous uh, recommendation from the TAP Commission. Um, staff recommends approval of this ordinance amendment, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Ms. Newland. Any questions or comments on this item from any members of the audience? Questions or comments from the Village Council? Commissioner Newstadt. It's just something I saw in the picture. Their driveway has a left arrow and a right out arrow. Are they planning on doing any restriping, or are they going to leave that because it's not going to be an all-day Turn it would, restriction. It, they can use it as a left turn during special events and non-peak times, so they would leave it in the current configuration. There would be a sign installed saying that you couldn't turn left during the peak periods. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Other, Commissioner Schnell? How is this going to be enforced? I mean, well, are, are they going to call the police department if they have problems, or? The police department was involved at the TAP meeting. They right. expressed no concerns about it. Um, they would do it just like they enforce other situations um, on a response basis as well as periodically um, monitoring it. Okay. I mean, anybody who's ever driven that during school hour, when, when school's beginning and when it's ending, anything and everything can only improve it. So I'm hoping this does work. Um, but my only concern is, you know, if, if Private conversations with parents did not work. You know, hopefully this will, but if it doesn't, I was wondering how we're going to actually enforce it. So, okay, we'll see how it goes. Thank you. Other questions or comments from members of the council? We can put up a camera, picture camera. Okay. I'm not proposing that. I'm just saying it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I think that's already been tweeted, too late. <laughs> yeah. A quick one. Dirk Commissioner Wallach. Oh. Thank you. Uh, to Commissioner Schnell's point, and, and congratulations to the school for, for bringing this forward because it's uh, a safety issue for them. 
So they tried to work with the parents, and now they're, they're coming to us. And when I first read this, I was thinking right away, a pork chop. But that would, that would turn it into a 24-hour mm -hmm. deal. And maybe, uh, maybe if the enforcement idea doesn't work, maybe at some point in the future, uh, the school could threaten doing that, making it permanent uh, uh, to disallow it, and maybe get uh, school parent uh, cooperation that way. You know, we could do it voluntarily now, or we can totally restrict it later. So, just a thought, but thank the school for uh, for bringing that forward and the TAP and uh, and Public Works for for working on all this. Thanks, Commissioner Barnett. So, do we think this is going to have an impact on Brookbank? Uh, so I'm, I'm th trying to. I mean, if you're from South of 55th, how are you going to get to the school in the morning? You're going to you're going to, I guess, take a right on 55th and then try making a left on Brookbank and then coming back around? I suppose people coming from the west will probably go down to Brookbank or to Carpenter and take a left or to Main Street. Are we, do we have any plans to, you know, measure before and measure after on, on something like, I mean, it, just trying to picture Brookbank, I wouldn't want to be doing much to increase traffic there. We can do traffic counts in the spring and monitor the effect on that. We can also just visually monitor what the traffic counts are. Uh, we all also, in the near future, be making major intersection improvements at Main Street, adding left turn lanes there with dedicated left turns, which I think people might be prefer to actually have a dedicated left turn lane with a turn movement. So that might entice people to go all the way to Main Street. Yeah. Color me a skeptic on that one. Yeah, I yeah. wouldn't hold, yeah. That would just stop signs. Okay. It's something we'll monitor over time. Other questions or comments? Thank you very much. And that will leave us with an uplifting presentation from the village manager on our last item. And it wouldn't be a council meeting if we didn't hear from community development either. So here to present information on an update uh, to the code of elevators is our Community Development Director, Tom Dabron. Who will rise to the occasion. Good evening. Absolutely. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, ordinance has been prepared amending certain portions of Chapter 7 of the Municipal Code uh, to reference the state mandated elevator codes to conform to the State of Illinois Elevator Safety and Regulation Act. Um, as indicated, this uh, when we are recommending approval at uh, next week's uh, active agenda, the, uh, this would keep uh, Downers Grove in conformance with the state act uh, and the set of regulations that apply. Um, you guys already guessed my, uh, the humor that I've worked into this, right? The village enforces these regulations via our elevator inspection program. Uh, and you had that open up and some guy said third floor menswear sporting goods. I'd really be impressed. <laughs> and the local inspection means um, improved safety in Downers Grove and more frequent maintenance um, as a result of the inspections. Uh, the changes are largely technical. I'm not going to follow each of these, uh, so you can rest your eyes for a moment. Um, the, um, uh, they're largely technical in nature, updates to the lighting requirements, energy conservation, which we just talked about not too long ago, improved firefighter servicing, um, uh, updates to technological systems, running the elevators and communication systems, improved compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act. This would affect uh, more than 300 elevators, escalators, and conveyances in Downers Grove. Um, adoption would provide some clarity and consistency for village staff, our inspection team, which is a private uh, firm that uh, we rely on to do the inspections, as well as uh, property owners and uh, elevator management firms. Um, it would allow, uh, importantly, for continuing the local inspection program, which we do believe uh, enhances uh, safety of these devices here. So um, the approval would apply only to the elevator codes and to no other aspects of the uh, village building code. We are not proposing any other changes. Staff recommends approval. We'd be happy to try to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Dave Reiner. Any questions or comments on this from any members of the audience? Questions or comments from the village council? Commissioner Waldeck? Comments. Uh, she is a former member of the elevator operators union. I'm really happy to see this. Uh, you know, I learn something new about you every week. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually, actually uh, 
for the last two weeks there was, there was some comments on incorporating codes and mandates and uh, and what what a pain they are and uh, and now we're incorporating elevator codes and it's true some requirements do increase costs and responsibilities but at the same time they they increase safety and they incorporate new technology uh, like you don't need elevator operators anymore uh, at least as far as I know there's probably still a union out there but uh, oh, you yeah. need somebody to push the button, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is basically what I did as an elevator operator. But as somebody who's uh, been stuck in an elevator and inadvisably crawled out, as someone who's <laughs> entered a burning elevator or was in an elevator that was dropping quickly and wouldn't stop, uh, so I appreciate a level of government that does uh, that does look into these codes because local government just doesn't have the time or resources to. Uh, uh, to create these codes and, uh, you know, thank heavens they're mandates because we definitely don't want to turn these into, into political situations. So I do fully support the code. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Durkin. Yeah, just point of clarification, these are for public elevators, not private, correct? Uh, these are the private elevators that are, you would find in the... But in a single-family residential unit wouldn't um, be uh, mandated by this? Some of uh, uh, new ones would, I believe. I can double check that for you. But I'm not uh, building a house with an elevator. I don't know anyone right. who actually has one, but I'm sure there are some yeah. in Downers. Oh yeah, I'm there's just probably about the a half dozen. Yeah. Part of this, with right. the or no, I'll I'll double check that. We mostly focus on uh, commercial, know, the, the, right? Yeah. Exactly. Because as we start seeing more and more construction of homes of all sizes and shapes. It would be probably something good to know up front if somebody comes in. Well, you have the stairways as well, the, the chair lifts. Yeah, that's true, too. Not that I want to get more government inside people's homes. I'm not. I just wanted to get a point of clarification. Safe. Thank you, Mayor. There's two headlines. <laughs> yeah, red Thank lights you, at Avery Coley and now uh, mandates on your private elevator. Other questions or comments from the council? Thank you. I have none. That ends our first reading, Mayor. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, Mr. Fieldman. That brings us to item nine. Yes. Mayor's report. I have no report. Save that time there. That brings us to the manager's report, item 10. Uh, last week, uh, the council directed staff to prepare proposed changes to our foul regulations, uh, commonly referred to as chicken ordinances. Uh, we plan to present the uh, proposed changes at a standing committee of the Village Council, tentatively scheduled for January 21st, 2013. January 21st, 2013, standing committee to further discuss any proposed changes. And that is our report tonight. We're happy to answer any questions. We have a time. Uh, the time, uh, Commissioner Drickin asked about the time. It'll be an early evening meeting. We have not set the time, location, or standing committee, but we do know it will be in the early evening on January 21st. Like six o'clock? Early or it, five It looks like six o'clock is probably what we're aiming for. Okay. Thank you. Mark your calendars. We'll look forward to that. Item 11, attorney's report. Thank you, Mayor. Three items to present this evening. The first is an ordinance providing for the issuance of not to exceed $3 million general obligation refunding bonds, series 2013 of the Village of Downers Grove, and providing for the levy and collection of a direct annual tax for the payment of the principal of and interest of said bonds an ordinance adopting updated reference codes for elevators, and an ordinance establishing turn restrictions at Avery Homes. Thank you very much. That brings us to item 12, council member reports and new business. First, do we have any new business items from any members of the village council? <laughs> You're going for that third headline? <laughs> <laughs> Hearing none, uh, council member reports. Let's start with Commissioner Waldeck. I have none, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner Rankin. Mr. Newstead's been talking about the gingerbread festival, but there's also a mailbox for Santa right at the gingerbread house. So if you want to bring your children down there and leave a letter for Santa, it's the same for us, North Pole. It's kind of fun, good tradition that we do. So thought I'd share. Thank you for doing so. Commissioner Newstead. Thank you, Mayor. The uh, Village of Donners Grove is uh, collecting gently used coats and winter accessories for all ages. There are two drop boxes, one here at Village Hall and one uh, across the Civic Center complex over at the police department. 
Uh, all items will be collected until January 14th and donated to Sharing Connections to benefit those in need in our community. So if you have any extra coats, gloves, hats, scarves, boots, other winter accessories, please bring them by Village Hall or the Police Department. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Schnell. Uh, just to remind people that you can recycle your old uh, Christmas lights uh, at Village Hall or Public Works too, right? Uh, it's a great way to not put them in your trash, which I just did um, before I knew we were doing it again this year. But it does say, well, it, it saves a lot of room in your trash cans. So, um, plus it's good for the environment. Thanks for sharing that. Okay. Commissioner Durkin. I have no report. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Bardad. I have no report, Mayor. Thank you. Well, now that Commissioner Durkin is done, I'm going to point out that this is the last week for yard waste pickup. If you haven't put yours out and your pickup was yesterday, it's already too late. <laughs> but for those of you, <laughs> bring in the Martin's house. Thanks for the late reminder. For those of you that have friends that are in another pickup zone, it may not be too late. And then uh, yard waste collection will resume on April 1st, 2013, and that is no joke. That's all I have. Uh, so with that, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Thank you very much, everyone. We are adjourned. Good night. <laughs>